blessings to everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is Prophet Opesikosa. And I'm so excited to bring to you another uh, prophetic school video, prophetic training video, uh, prophetic knowledge video, uh, because I feel this is, is so important. Um, it's been a while since I've, I've done one of these, but I will be uploading more uh, videos on prophetic knowledge um, over the next couple of days or next couple of weeks. But my aim is to upload at least one video a week to help you grow in your prophetic gift. So I want to share a couple of things with you, uh, maybe just three points with you on the prophetic, especially for young upcoming prophets. When I mean young, I'm not talking about age, but I'm talking about young spiritually. People are just coming into the prophetic. Um, people are still experiencing this fire and who still have this zeal for this gift and anointing. It's important to understand the prophetic protocols because there is protocols, there is principles. And um, this is what governs this gift. Yes, it's a hard gift actually. It's very, it, it's very difficult to, to have restraints on this gift because it's so diverse and most of the time it relies entirely on God. But yes, there are principles and protocols for this gift even when it is inspired by God most of the time, all right? Now I'll explain probably another time what I mean when I say inspired by God, but some people already get it. But first thing that I want to say is that um, every prophet should check their prophetic word before they release it. So the first point is that your prophetic word should never contradict the word of God. All right, because the word of God, even God himself has set his word above himself. So the word is higher than God because God set his word above himself. So there's no way that prophecy will bypass that. So any prophetic word, it has to be confirmed in scripture. If you receive a prophetic word, you can look in the scripture. Where was a similar word written? Is this possible that a prophet can speak in this way? We have to regulate the prophetic anointing using the word of God. All right. Because many people can speak from their flesh. They can speak from their soul. They can speak from their desire. So this, that's why it's important that we regulate every prophetic word or judge every prophetic word using the word of God. So no prophetic word is above the word of God. So if somebody comes and says, uh, God spoke to me to write a new Bible. Mm, you need to sit down. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you 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 get the point or somebody comes and says i'm gonna i'm gonna add to the 66 books i'm gonna add uh, another 30 books you you need to sit down because you don't know what you're talking about so uh, the prophecy must never never contradict the scripture all right number two i want you to avoid ambiguous prophecies or ambiguous um declarations if I can say uh, what do I mean by this I mean by someone have you ever had a moment where somebody is prophesying their prophetic word does not mean one thing it could mean four or five things so you inst instead of getting clarity you are left trying to understand what is going on what did he mean what did he say you know, I've had a lot of people come to me and say, man of oh God, I received the prophetic word like this, like this. I don't understand. What does it mean? I'll make an example for you. Somebody comes to you and says, um, you have the anointing of the prophetic. Although it sounds clear, but it's an ambiguous revelation. Why? Because what does that mean? I have a prophetic anointing. Explain. Does it mean I'm born a prophet? Does it mean I have the gift of prophecy? Does it mean I have the prophetic anointing as per being in a prophetic atmosphere or prophetic covering? What does it mean? You see, so it's a word that sounds clear, but it could have many meanings. You, you, you're not really sure what exactly it means. So you're left with more questions than, 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 than answers.
So every prophet should avoid releasing prophetic words that are not clear and direct. At the same time, it is possible that a prophet can see something he does not understand. In that case, it is important that as a prophetic person or as a prophet, you pray over it, ask God for make more clarity. Sometimes we, 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 we speak things in public because we rush because of pressure and so forth that really need more understanding to it. And it is important that if you did not get a chance to explain it uh, at that particular moment, that you find time to pray, ask God to reveal more. Jesus did this a number of times in the scriptures. He would say parables, but then he would find time to privately explain, explain those parables to his disciples. So it is important that anytime something has been spoken, if it is spoken in revelation, if it is spoken in a mysterious note, let there also be time to, to bring understanding on that which has been spoken. That is very important. I think if you can do that, growing in that gift, avoid ambiguous prophecies, it'll make life easy and it'll make people wanna trust you. People have to trust indeed that God speaks to you. The third point, which probably would have been the first point that I should have released, is that believe in the prophetic anointing you carry first before you want others to believe in it. Believe in what you carry. Let what you carry work for you. Before you want to navigate for somebody to find their ID, their lost passport, their lost car keys, can you do it when you lose your 100 Rand or your $10? So it is very dangerous to try and persuade people to believe in something that you have never seen work for you, all right? Uh, tell me the private battles that you fought. Tell me the private moments where you've encountered God. That's where I wanna, that's, that's what I wanna see. Um, when you are in public and you telling me you can fight Goliath as a David, um, yes, I might not doubt, I might not really doubt you. If I doubt you, then it's for your own grave because if you mess up with Goliath, Goliath is gonna kill you. But what I'm more interested in is what battles have you fought before you try and fight Goliath? Hey, man, I've killed a lion before. I've killed a bear before. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? All right, now that's interesting because you've experienced this power in private when nobody was there with you. Now let's see it in public. If you cannot see the grace in private, if you cannot see the grace when you're alone, then definitely you're gonna have problems when you're in public, all right? I hope this has blessed you. I know it's very, very short. I know people are about to complain, but don't worry, I'm gonna come with a special, special one for you especially all the prophetic uh, people that are mentoring who love these videos. I'm gonna bring another special one for you. But for this time, meditate on what I've said, go deeper in it, learn and grow. And may you rise higher and higher in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To get the anointing. Oh yes, oh yeah, oh yes. Oh, yeah. It may be hard to get a job, but, oh, but it cannot be hard to get the anointing. Oh, it may be hard to get a boyfriend, but it cannot be hard to get the Holy Ghost. It can be hard to get other things, but when it comes to anointing of the Holy Ghost, it can never be hard.